for a low pass filter, we're going to be adding a capacitor in parallel with our feedback resistor. So we have our R2 and we have the capacitance here. It's an inverting amplifier. So we have a single pole low pass filter that's going to be created. This is shown in figure five. The transfer function for a low pass is given by the following. Um, I have plugged these values into like symbol lab to get the exact values because I've already done this. And my lab partner has done the description. They've done the calculations for the exact values. And then we have the spice and then we have the waveform results. And then we have a description here. Um, and we might have chosen different resistors. So he chose R1 to be two kilo ohms and our R2 to be six kilo ohms. Um, but for me, uh, I was not able to do that. So the resistors that we have are going to be slightly different. Our R2 is going to be 20 kilo ohms and our R1 is going to be 6.69 kilo ohms. So with that, we can build our circuit. Um, I've also calculated the percent error and I've plugged these values in. We're plugging it into the transfer function here. Um, and the first thing that I'm doing with this part is I am just looking at this part, the omega divided by our omega P. And so we have our omega up here. Omega is equal to two pi times frequency. And the frequency here is going to be five. So we have five times 10 cubed. And then we have this over one over our, um, our P. So our WP is gonna be equal to one over our R2 times C. So we're just plugging those values in. And we get that and we plug it into here and then we're gonna get this. And then we have our percent error here and then a percent error here. And so looking at this, we have those values and then we have the capacitor that we are going to be using as well. In doing the calculations for our WP to find the exact capacitance, because we don't know exactly what capacitance we are here, we are just given a pole frequency of five kilohertz. What we're gonna do is we're gonna find this capacitance. So we're gonna trade places with the C and the WP. So we have one over our R2, and our R2 is about 6.69 kilo ohms. And then we have our WP, and for this we're just gonna use our omega. And so we're gonna have um, our capacitance multiplied by two pi times the frequency. And the frequency here is the five kilohertz. And so if we do this, we're gonna get approximately 4.76 nano farads um, for the capacitance. And for the capacitor that I have, uh, it's not 4.76, it's 4.563. And that's quite a bit of difference but so that might result in a higher than normal percent error and it might be out of our range for the graph but that's what we're going to be using just for the demonstrational purposes and we can see that we have a pretty high percent error here for the values that i even calculated and so we would plug this back into here um, once we have this all sorted out we plug it back into here because that is our transfer function and then we're going to use the magnitude to get this and magnitude is just the square root of the imaginary number squared plus the real number squared. Uh, we would do that right here to convert it to polar form. So we would need to convert this into um, the polar form from rectangular form, divide these both, and then that gets the magnitude out front. And so now we can look to our breadboard. This is the circuit from last time. We have to make sure our master enable is off so we don't have current running through this. So we accidentally short circuit something so with that off, I am going to unplug these wires. That way we can see the breadboard a little bit clearer. So unplugging these and then just resting them over here, we can see our breadboard. Now from here, what I'm going to want to do is I'm gonna notice that we um, have our positive still connected to the ground. We're not gonna to touch our power supplies. We have our R1 going into our VN. And last time we had two voltage inputs, so now we need to decide which one we're taking out. Well, we want the 6.69 capacitor, and that's this brown one here. So we're just going to take this one and remove it from here. Now the capacitor I measured to be about 4.56 on the multimeter, and that is again what we're going to be using. So we're gonna take this capacitor, and it's going to be in parallel with our R2. And for something to be in parallel, they need to be going um, into the same node and going out into the same node. And what we can do, or the same column. And so what we can do is we're not gonna have this go straight into our voltage output. Um, we know that these two capacitors are connected in series to make the 20 kilo ohms of resistance. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this capacitor and then I'm going to actually put it across the breadboard. That way we have more working room. So it's going to go across from here and it's going to terminate into here. We're not changing any anything really, we're just moving it. And then we're going to take our other 10 kilo ohm resistor and we're going to put it in series with this. So it's going to go into the same column and then it's going to terminate into a different column but it's not going to um, touch anything else. There's nothing else in that column. And then we can take our capacitor since it is in parallel and with this capacitor it's going to go into the same column as this one so it's going to go in here and it's also going to terminate into the same column. So we can see that they both go into this one and they both end in this one right here. And from that what we're going to want to do is we can use a wire. I'm just going to take this one and we're going to connect it into that same terminating column so right above both of them and that's going to go to our voltage output. And that is it for the parallel right here. Um, and then we have this resistor by itself. This is our R1. And we just need our voltage input going into it. So we can connect our voltage input like this. Now we want to monitor our results. So as always, our blue wire is going to be our voltage output. We're going to connect it to our Vout. So the same as the green one. And then our orange is going to be monitoring our voltage input from our analog discovery. And that is going to go into this one here. And so we have these connected. And that's going to be our breadboard and voltage input is going to flow through here. Let's go into our negative terminal. And then the voltage output is going to flow through this wire. It's going to flow through these two impedances in parallel. And this one is in series. So really it flows through all of this together because we can add these two up. That's like 20. And it flows through all of that together. And then it's going to make its way into here. And so that is it for our breadboard. Now we can look at the waveform. So we're going to run our wave gen, we're going to run our scope, and we're going to turn our master enable on, and then we're going to get something like this. And so our gain, if we look to this, the peak to peak gain is about three if we have our voltage output divided by our voltage input. In our wave gen software, we're only using the scope one right now. That's the only one we care about. So what we can do is we can change our frequency from the one kilohertz to our five kilohertz, which is what we want. And then we can see that we have our five kilohertz output. It's gonna look like this. And we have done our breadboard correctly, as well as our wave gen. And so that is it for the low pass. Next, we are going to be looking at the high pass for this.